Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Free Artos On Demand video, where we cover the topics requested by you, members of the Free Artos community. I'm your host, Rashid Talukter. So, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about what we're doing on the Free Artos side of things as usual, but we're also bringing a guest speaker from our, one of our partners, Qualcomm, to talk about one of their dev kits, as well as the company SDK, and a demonstration of setting up an application for connectivity to AWS using FreeRTOS and uh, libraries from within the AWS IoT device SDK for embedded C, and uh, other libraries for uh, Alexa voice services to enable a voice assisted demo uh, that we're going to be showing you today. So, diving right into FreeRTOS, you may have noticed that there's quite a bit of work that's being done across almost all of our repositories on GitHub. And one of those, uh, a newer one that you might have seen, is actually for SMP support of the FreeRTOS kernel. Yeah, symmetric multiprocessing available on FreeRTOS. So definitely take a look at that because SMP support has been probably the most requested feature uh, for the FreeRTOS kernel throughout its entire history. Another repository that we're working on that's also new is and a labs project is called uh, Core SNTP, which is a SNTP library which will allow you to get internet time so you can sync it with your device clock. It's a lightweight library just like all the other uh, core prefix uh, libraries that we have out there, and its only dependency is the are the standard C libraries, uh, specifically for from C90. Like I said, it's also in in labs preview stages, but it should be going GA pretty shortly. So. The meat of the the video today, we've got none other than Rajan Mistry. Uh, he's going to be coming to us from Qualcomm to talk about the QC, uh, QCA 4020 um, and demonstrate the SDK, how it works, how to set it up with FreeRTOS, and be and give us a demonstration of a Alexa uh, library that 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 they have and the functionality with one of their development boards. So, uh, let's welcome Rajan. Hey, Rajan, how are you doing today? Hey, thanks, Rashid. I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So, what are you going to be talking to us today? Good, good. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm Rajan Mistry. I'm a senior staff engineer with Qualcomm. I work with a small team within Qualcomm uh, that is developer interfacing. So, what we try to do is uh, take all the dev kits that we have that have Qualcomm technology inside and try to make more make it more accessible to, to developers and ecosystem partners. So today, I am really excited to share with uh, with everybody the Qualcomm QCA 1420 development kit. We're going to talk about how uh, developers can use free RTOS on the dev kit, and then uh, we'll dive into uh, into the demo. So quickly taking a look at the agenda, uh, right? So uh, like I said, uh, I'll introduce the QCA 1420 dev kit. We'll also talk a little bit about the Home Hub 100 development board and how it's a little bit different different from uh, the QCA 4020 uh, development kit will take a high level look at the software block diagram and try to understand how developers can leverage RTOSs like free RTOS on the platform. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the SDK that comes with the development kit and how developers can leverage uh, the sample apps that are included in the SDK. We'll do a deep dive into the demo and hopefully at the end I'll leave everybody with some useful resources. All right. Sounds like a pack full of Jennifer today. Let's get on to it. Yeah, great. So uh, before we jump into the QCA 4020 specs, just a quick side note. Uh, anytime you see a QR code on, on a slide, that's a link to some useful resources that will point developers to uh, in the right direction. Right, so talking about the QCA 4020 SOC, it's uh, a tri-mode connectivity SOC that supports Bluetooth 5. Uh, it has a dual band Wi-Fi. And it also supports A22.15.4 based technologies, including ZigBee and Thread. So uh, it really enables developers to build their own applications and run those applications on the SOC itself. It has a dedicated ARM Cortex M4 uh, CPU to run the customer apps. And we will see how developers can leverage uh, uh, RTOSs like pre RTOS and run their sample apps on the Cortex M4. It has two, two other CPUs, one dedicated to handle the BLE and the 802.15.4 uh, stack, and then one more uh, extensor based uh, CPU dedicated for the Wi-Fi uh, stack. Uh, just to highlight one more feature uh, on, the, on the platform, it uh, provides a bunch of security features, 
It has secure boot and secure storage. It also has a dedicated hardware crypto engine and it has Qualcomm supplementation of our trusted execution environment. So taking a quick look at the development board for the QCA 4020 SOC, uh, like any other development board, it's really built to enable developers to quickly get started with the platform. It has a whole bunch of uh, sensors and actuators on board, and it comes with sample apps that can show uh, developers how to read data from these sensors, how to post data to the cloud services, uh, and and uh, much more. But if you want, you developers are working with the sensors which are not on board. Uh, there is an Arduino shield uh, connector, so you can quickly add on shields on top of this development board and uh, realize your uh, proof of concept uh, on on this development board. Yeah, that's a lot of sensors on uh, on the dev dev kit, and but then there's also more, right, with the home hub. Yes, with the home hub, it's uh, an extension to the QCA forty twenty development kit that we just saw. So what it does, it utilizes the Arduino shield connector that's on the development board and adds a daughter board on top of the, the QCA4020 dev board. So this daughter board is a smart audio processing daughter board. It has a voice DSP. So it really takes input from a user, voice input from a user. It uses the GPIOs, I2C, I2S connections on the Arduino shield connector and then sends that data to the SOC. And then that's how uh, you can build an application with Alexa voice services enabled on the development kit. So the dev kit by itself, uh, when developers get the dev kit, it comes pre-installed with the Alexa voice services sample app uh, and the documentation walks developers through how they can get started with the sample app. Only thing they need to do is go to AWS IoT Core, go to Alexa voice services, register this device, uh, download the certificates for uh, authentication, store them on the device and then they can get started with the sample app and all the instructions are uh, basically uh, included in the documentation. Nice. So having looked at a high level uh, for the development platform, let's take a look at the software block diagram on how developers can quickly get started with their user applications. Uh, we see here uh, they can really build their user applications using uh, free RTOS and run them on Cortex M4 and they can use uh, AWS IoT connectivity libraries and send receive data uh, with AWS IoT core using MQTT or JSON and really subscribe to different uh, IoT topics. Uh, this also introduces the concept of a queue API. So queue API is basically uh, uh, a layer which exposes low level system software and it, it provides interfaces for different hardware peripherals, uh, communication interfaces, network uh, uh, services, uh, security services, and much, much more. So uh, developers building applications don't have to uh, kind of worry about the underlying uh, PLE firmware or Wi-Fi IP stacks. They can just leverage the queue APIs and use the queue API calls to quickly build their applications. And the, yeah. the SDK, we'll take a look in a minute. It uh, kind of includes uh, reference implementation of queue API. Yeah, the queue API is that's a uh, that's a really nice abstraction that you're providing, especially with so many different cores on the SOC itself. Yeah, um, that can end up having so many different nuances that makes it challenging to uh, set up an application. Yeah, especially on the first go. Yeah, it also makes that's nice that's there. Yeah, it also makes the the user application more portable. So it also has tie-ins to uh, RTOSes. So at certain level, queue API can also call uh, uh, free RTOS. So if uh, to make it more portable, you can you can actually use Q API that in turn uses uh, free RTOS. So th there is a lot of uh, different ways uh, developers can directly call free RTOS or use Q APIs. Nice. Okay. So having looked at the high level software block diagram, let's take a look at the actual SDK that developers can once again download from the link that you see on the screen. Uh, and I won't go through each one of these items uh, on the on the slide, but just want to highlight the top three uh, important ones for me uh, for this uh, discussion at least. Uh, the third party folder will have uh, third party libraries like for example the free RTOS libraries. This is where you will find uh, the free RTOS libraries that then developers can choose to modify and recompile. Uh, the demo folder actually uh, really enables developers to to quickly get started with the platform. It has a whole bunch of sample apps, including the Alexa uh, voice services sample app uh, that we'll take a look at today. 
And all of these sample apps are command line interface sample apps. So once you launch the sample app, it will give you a command line interface over a serial port and developers can quickly test out different features on the SOC. And everything from reading data from GPIOs to making network connections to PLE connections, uh, sending and receiving data from cloud services. So all of that, uh, th th there is a sample app which kind of shows developers how to, how to do that. So they can quickly get started, take different components and start building their proof of concept on top of this. Nice. And a quick uh, point of clarification for viewers is that um, the with the third party libraries that's being used as written is written down here. Uh, it uses the AWS IoT uh, SDK for device SDK for embedded C, yes. um, which which gives you which gives you uh, you know simplified connectivity to the AWS IoT MQTT broker uh, subscription to certain topics uh, for shadows, for example. Um, but also just namely providing a really straightforward way to connect to AWS IoT. Um, and then you've got the free RTOS kernel, et cetera, that's also included within the SDK. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, Rashid. Thanks for pointing that out. And uh, last but not the least, on this slide, I want to point out uh, there are a bunch of tools also included in the SDK. And uh, later on in the demo, we'll see how we can use one of those tools to uh, make life a little bit easier for developers to start uh, kind of downloading different certificates and storing them locally uh, on the QCA 4020 SOC. Nice. So now having looked at the high level hardware uh, setup, uh, development kit, software uh, structure, let's uh, jump into the demo and uh, see uh, how we can use Alexa. Yeah, let's see the demo. Let's take a look at all the different components that we will be using for the demo. Uh, first and foremost, you will need the SDK that can be downloaded from Qualcomm.com and you can download it and store it to a local directory on your host PC. Uh, second one is a hyperterminal program like PuTTY that you can use to connect to the device over a serial connection. Uh, last but not the least is something like a Dragon Boat Potency that you can use to run the Search CS tool that we can use uh, as a server that QCA4020 will connect and download the certificates. So let's take a closer look at the SDK itself and see how FreeRTOS is set up uh, for developers to use on the QCA4020 platform. So uh, the FreeRTOS libraries are included in the SDK uh, when you download uh, it. And you can see all the different components of the library already uh, part of the SDK. But if a developer is looking to uh, recompile the SDK, maybe upload, up, update the free RTOS SDK, make some changes, upload to the latest one, uh, depending on the environment, whether they are having a, a Windows environment or a Linux environment, the build.bat files and the make files are included in the SDK. They can use these files to kind of recompile uh, the free RTOS libraries uh, for QCA4020. Now let's take a quick look at the actual demo, the AIS demo and, and building that demo uh, for the QCA4020. Uh, once again, the, the actual sample app has the build uh, uh, folder and the source folder. The build folder has all the files needed to uh, compile the uh, software. And it's as easy as just running build.bat f for free RTOS 4020 for the SOC and CDB for the development board. Once you build and flash the device, uh, next step is to actually launch the search CS tool on the on the Dragon Board 410C. Uh, we've copied the tool onto the Dragon Board, but we've also copied the uh, uh, the configuration JSON file and the uh, certificates that we generated on AWS IoT core. Uh, to the same folder where we are running the search CS service. Uh, compiling the search CS tool on Dragon Board is just using the make file uh, and, and make the software on Dragon Board. And we just launch the tool using the command dot slash search CS minus S. Uh, once the tool is launched, uh, it's going to wait for the QCA4020 to connect to the Dragon Board and download the certificates, download the root CA and download the uh, JSON file. So the now next step is to launch the actual sample app uh, on the uh, QCA4020 development kit and connect to it uh, over a serial connection. So open the COM port, uh, set the right uh, baud rate, 
And once you start the device, you will see a command line interface menu that the sample app gives the developers. And uh, within this menu, it's a nested menu. You can see uh, zero is for version, one will give you help. And if you go one level down, so let's say if you go into the WLAN menu, again, within that WLAN menu, uh, one is for help, uh, two brings you one level up uh, from the menu. Uh, you can see within the WLAN menu, uh, three is for, uh, five is for enable, and seven is for connecting. So let's go ahead and use this submenu to connect the QCA 4020 to Wi-Fi. And then we'll use that Wi-Fi connection to uh, connect to the Dragon Board 410C and download the certificates and uh, the root CA and the configuration JSON file. So we use the net submenu uh, using these commands. Uh, we can see the QCA 4020 connecting to the Dragon Board and downloading uh, the certificates. We can do the same for the root CA and we can do the same for the configuration JSON file. So once you have downloaded the certificates and the configuration JSON file, the next step is to just reset the device and, and launch the Alexa uh, voice sample app. So once the device is reset, we can go ahead and retrace our steps to reconnect the device to Wi-Fi. And once we have Wi-Fi connection, we can go ahead and launch the Alexa voice services. The first step the device does when we launch Alexa voice services is go ahead and read the configuration JSON file that we stored on the device. And it's going to have all the required information like the IoT endpoints, the account numbers, uh, certificate names, MQTT client IDs that it needs to uh, uh, register itself uh, to the Alexa voice services and AWS IoT core over HTTPS and uh, the MQTT connections to manage different events uh, within the application. And then you can see the device connecting to AWS uh, IoT core services, registering this sh shadow connections. And once you see Alexa client is ready is when you are ready to use Alexa on the development kit. Wow, that was a really great demo. There was a lot that you just showed us. And uh, you know, in terms of functionality, the setup seemed really straightforward, just getting the certificates, having that put in, and minor configuration uh, changes, which you showed us for Wi-Fi and et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, to get us a really rich functional demo um, with a uh, voice services uh, using Alexa. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, um, you know, you've got additional resources that you want to show us too, right? Yeah. For how to, how to uh, optimize even further. Yeah, so I, I want to point out a couple of different uh, hooks how the SDK kind of enables developers to quickly uh, change a few configuration parameters uh, and, and change the behavior of their uh, their application, right? So uh, one of the examples is by default, the SDK limits the, the maximum simultaneous BLE connections to four. And if, uh, if you want to limit your application to a lower number or have more simultaneous BLE connections, uh, developers can quickly just change that behavior uh, using uh, one parameter uh, in the configuration file. And you can find more details about that in the programmer's guide. And uh, once again, the link will point you uh, to the programmer's guide and you can find all the different options that are available for you to change in the config file. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll post some of these links as well um, in the description below. So definitely check that out. Or you can scan the QR code too. Yeah. So, so one more uh, uh, configuration I would like to point out is for something like free RTOS, uh, there might be different memory requirements based on the application that you are developing. So you can quickly change that as well. Developers can change the amount of code uh, allocated versus data allocated uh, memory. And that's once again, a quick change with a couple of lines of code in the configuration file. And uh, last, uh, lastly, I would like to leave everybody with some uh, some more quick links, uh, how where they can get the dev kit, some useful uh, documentation, useful tutorial videos, and a whole bunch of projects, including the Alexa voice demo uh, that we just saw. Uh, all of these will help you quickly get started with the uh, with the platform. And with that, uh, thanks, Ashit, for for having me. And uh, hopefully, the content was useful and uh, inspiring. Uh, developers to quickly get started with 3RTOS and use platforms like UCA 4020 to build their prototypes quickly. Yeah, I think it's kind of it's a really great hardware platform for developers to use. Uh, get started with building uh, dem demos using AIA, and uh, you know, a lot of familiar uh, libraries and a lot of familiar technology for individuals as well. Um, it's made it as easy as you can. So I think uh, the community definitely appreciates all of that. And um, 
I really appreciate having you uh, come on today as our guest and to be able to talk to you and show everything off. Yeah, thanks, Rashid. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Take care. Take care, Bye, Rajan. That is the end of our show today, and thank you so much for being with us. I'm back again soon for the next episode, and until then, take care.